I am a competitor. I was born to compete. And I was lucky to discover this at a young age. You see, my parents started me skiing when I was three years old. And by the time I was seven, I vowed to them that I would ski race in the Olympics. And I worked hard towards accomplishing that dream and that goal and quickly rose the ranks in the national ski racing ranks. Until one early morning, when I was 16 years old, the unthinkable happened. And it was an early morning downhill training run, and I lost control and went flying off into the trees. I hit the first tree with my back, bounced off of that tree, and flew into the next tree with my head, hard enough to shatter my fiberglass helmet. The ski patrol came and stabilized me and rushed me to the local hospital where my father, the radiologist on call, had to read my x-rays. And as he put the x-ray of where I had impacted that tree up on the screen, he could see the severity of my injury and knew that I needed to go into emergency surgery to relieve that pressure on my spine. The next morning, I woke up in the intensive care unit, my parents by my side, and the doctors walk in. They pull the covers back and they go, okay, Muffy, we want you to move your toes. <laughs> Easy enough for 16 years. Every time I thought move toes, my toes moved. So I thought move toes, look down, and my toes didn't move. And I was devastated. I was scared. I couldn't envision any positive future if I was going to be paralyzed and dependent on a wheelchair for my mobility. I wanted to die. I can now tell you many years later that I am so thankful that I didn't die and that I discovered, while totally valid, all those initial fears were completely untrue. But first, I had to allow myself to go through that struggle, that loss, and learn how to be in that grief. Not to deny it or try to overcome it, but to learn how to embrace it. And at this time, a wise woman, my mom, told me, that those feelings and emotions I was having were totally valid. I had sustained a tremendous loss, and it was okay to be sad, mad, scared, pissed off. That was okay, and I needed to give myself permission. We decided we were gonna give those days a name, and we called them grieving days. And I would declare when I was having a grieving day, and then I would give myself permission to simply feel whatever feeling or emotion I was having at that time. It's not easy to sit in negative, uncomfortable emotions. It's hard. It's hard to be in that mire of adversity. But if we are all going to learn the gifts and the opportunities that adversity has to teach us, we first need to learn and to give ourselves permission to be in those difficult spaces. Not to deny them, but to embrace them. And it was only after I began to embrace the changes that had been thrust upon me from my accident that I was really able to start to move through my challenges. And you know what I discovered? I learned that I could still be that competitor I was born to be. No, maybe not in the Olympics, but in the Paralympics. And I could still have an amazing, wonderful, meaningful, and fulfilling life, perhaps different from the life I might have had, but by no means less. But those discoveries would never have been possible until I learned how to embrace those opportunities that my adversity had to teach me. And what else I learned by embracing my disability? 
I found self-worth, self-confidence, true self-confidence, not dependent on winning medals or races or what job I had or how much money I made, but I learned to love myself, paralyzed legs and all. And I found my true strength. And I realized that I could accomplish whatever I was. I realized and discovered our interdependence and that no matter how much we may profess to be so independent, it is truly our interdependence that strengthens us and that empowers us and that we never really accomplish anything on our own, but we need each other to reach those dreams and those goals. I recognize the importance and value of strong support systems. And I discovered how blessed I was to have one of the most amazing support systems ever. My family, my friends, my community. I had so many people there with me, helping push me forward, picking me up when I fell down, helping me go forward to those goals and those dreams, not letting me quit and give up and being there with me to grieve when I just needed to grieve. I renewed my faith, and I learned that I was never alone. And I became empowered simply by learning to embrace and accept my disability and accept and love myself unconditionally. I found my true strength, and I learned that I was stronger than anything that could happen to me. And that is empowering. Now, I wouldn't change a thing. My accident has profoundly impacted who I am, the person I've become, and how I have evolved. And I like who I am. I have a terrific life. No, it is not easy. But nothing worthwhile ever truly is. And I still have grieving days, although most of the time they have nothing to do with being in a wheelchair. <laughs> They're about being a wife, a mom, social, or my regular technological challenges. But I have learned to embrace those days too and to know how important and valid they are in helping me to grow and evolve as a person. I'm not a saint. I am not amazing. I am just a person full of flaws, but who's been blessed with adversity and who has accepted the challenge to learn and grow from the opportunity. So my message to you is this. When adversity strikes, and it will, know while you are struggling deep in the muck of your challenge, scared, and overwhelmed, allow yourself to be vulnerable. Be in that muck. Embrace that adversity. And know, truly know in the core of your being that there is a light at the end of the struggle. And that simply by walking through and embracing your challenge, you are growing and evolving. And when you eventually emerge triumphant, you will be stronger and more powerful than you ever knew. And hopefully, through time, you too will be able to look back and see all the blessings of your adversity. Thank you.